I'm going to talk to y'all today about poultry house tightness. Uh, we just got two good presentations about, you know, electrical energy conservation. And I'm going to talk more about, um, you know, conservation of fuel usage, specifically propane. And all of this is, of course, going to be in poultry houses. But this a lot of this is going to extend to any kind of uh, negative pressure ventilated barn with a supplemental heat. Um, but just to get right into it. Um, modern poultry house design has really had energy efficiency in mind as it involved as it has evolved. We've you know we've moved away from these low slung brooders, open sidewall concepts to a modern broiler barn. You know LED lighting, attic inlets, solid sidewalls. You know insulated sidewall inlets, insulated tunnel doors, etc. And we've especially you know been focused on decreasing heat loss in areas, and that's because heat, of course, is always going to move from hot to cold, and especially in the winter times, it's usually hotter in our barns than it is outside. And there's that energy balance going on in the house. You know, heat added's got to be equal to you know heat out to keep the internal temperature constant. But if we can mitigate how much heat is uh, leaving the facility, then we don't have to burn as much fuel to keep that temperature constant. You know, and we've done this improving insulation and ceiling, sidewalls and end walls, insulated tunnel doors and inlets, and totally enclosing our sidewalls. So with all these improvements, where is the area of most heat loss in the house? You know, we still have massive ceilings. Uh, we still have long sidewalls. Well, in a modern totally enclosed 50 by 500 foot uh, broiler house, 80% of our heat loss is due to ventilation and leakage. And even if we consider a house with curtains like our breeder growers, uh, if we slapped a curtain on that same 50 by 500 foot house, 74% uh, of our uh, heat loss is still due to ventilation and leakage. So if most of our heat loss is through ventilation and leakage, how do we maximize energy conservation? We can't stop ventilating houses, but we can improve uh, house tightness. And that's because... Our houses are designed for air to enter through their specified inlets, whether that's tunnel inlets in the summer or in the wintertime, bringing air through sidewall inlets or attic inlets if you have them. We want as much air as possible to enter through those inlets, especially in the wintertime. We want to heat up that air and that warm ceiling. We want to bring in that fresh air, heat it up, and then that air jet's going to detach and fall to the birds. What we don't want is we don't want leakage along the sidewalls, as you can see in that leaky curtain video, where that air is just dropping straight to the ground. It's not having time to heat up, uh, and it could even, you know, depending on what the temperature is, be chilling chicks over there in that area. And we're also going to be drying this air as we bring it in the house, because as that air temp increases, relative humidity is going to go down. For every 20 degrees uh, air increases in temperature, relative humidity is cut in half. It means we're going to have more moisture holding capacity of that air that got brought in to suck up moisture that's being produced in the house by the birds and then exhaust it out. So how do we evaluate house tightness? Well, you need just a static pressure gauge. Uh, we like this magna helic gauge. There's digital meters and most controllers, if not all of them now, are going to have a static pressure sensors on them. And you're just going to conduct a quick, simple house tightness test. You're going to pick a calm day, close all of your inlets, and then turn on about a CFM for every square foot of floor space. So for a 40 by 500 foot, 20,000 square foot house, you're looking at probably a 48 inch fan, maybe two thirty sixes. And you want to make sure you use fans that have the best belts and pulleys. And those usually aren't those first fans that click on with uh, minimum ventilation timers. Um, and then you're just going to measure that static pressure. So here on this short time controller, we've got 15 points of static pressure. And then we could sit down and do all this uh, with, you know, just straight math, but uh, we have a poultry 411 app with calculators in it that's going to make running through these examples quicker and easier. So we're going to go to calculators and our poultry house, leakage, poultry house leakage area calculator. And we're going to input our data from our pressure, or our pressure test. So we've got a 50 by 500 foot house, 23,000 CFM, and we pulled 25 points static pressure with it. We hit calculate and it's going to take us over here and we see that we've got 8.1 square foot of leakage area for this house. 
It's also going to give us a relative leakage area per thousand square foot of floor space. And what's really good about that is this allows us to really compare houses to houses, because if you're just looking at total leakage area, you know, eight square foot of leakage in an old 38 by 400 is a lot different than eight square foot of leakage in a new 66 by 600 foot house. And so we see this relative leakage number is also what's put up over here on this, you know, graduated bar. And we see that this is a, a pretty good, pretty tight house. We can also then go through the app to estimate how much air is entering through the inlets with the inlet system effectiveness. You're going to put in your, your uh, number of inlets and in size, and it's going to spit out. And we see that 70% of the air is entering through our inlets. Remember, we want as much air as possible to be entering through those inlets so it's getting warmed and dried um, most efficiently. It also shows us, you know, it'll approximate inlet opening size and some things like that. And then we can estimate fuel usage due to leakage. Remember, ventilation and leakage attribute the most of our heat loss. That's the biggest reason that we have to continually add heat in the houses, especially when those birds are younger. So we get a 24 hour heating estimate and we're gonna put in our data for that. It's 40 degrees outside, light three mile an hour wind, looks like we're brooding at 90 in the house. Calculate, so we're burning almost nine gallons of propane a day uh, just to take care of the leakage of this house. It's, that's not, you know, heat loss through walls, that's not uh, ventilation, that's just because of the leakage. Well, what about a loose house? Remember, that was a tight house. So again, the same 50 by 500 foot house, the same 23,000 CFM uh, tunnel fan, but this time it only pulls a 0.05 pressure. Well, if we calculate that leakage area, we're looking at 29 square or 27 square foot of leakage and over a one on the relative leakage area. Um, well, what does that mean for our inlets though? Again, the tight house pulled 70% of 20,000 CFM through its inlets. This is not going to pull any of it through the inlets. This house is just going to crack ventilate. Um, and that's really not what we want. You, you know, it, that air is not moving the way that it's designed through those inlets. And propane usage, remember, we burned almost nine gallons a day in the tight house. We're burning, we're going to burn 30 gallons pretty much this day uh, just due to our leakage of that brooding day. Okay, well, we know our house is loose. What do we do about it? Well, we got to figure out where it's loose. So for detecting those areas of leakage, um, we oftentimes use a smoke generator. This is an insect fogger with mineral oil in it, and you can see it puts out a ton of smoke. And so if your house is loose, you're going to take that around the house, turn on a couple of fans, and close up the inlets like you did for the pressure test, and you're going to smoke... Uh, all around the outside of that house, especially problem areas, curtains, stem walls, inlets, et cetera. And then somebody's going to be inside making notes, flagging, painting, wherever to denote where that smoke is entering the house, where you're having that leakage come in from. You can also use thermal cameras if you have one to evaluate areas of house leakage. You know, they make uh, pretty good and cheap ones for, you know, your phones nowadays. Uh, and so like this, we see this is leaky tunnel shutters, and we can see that that air is spilling in all the way to the drinker line on these birds. And it doesn't even necessarily just have to be the leakage areas itself. You can see some of this through the inlets. Like in this picture, you can see that leaky sidewall, but also if you look at the inlet jet on the top going across the ceiling, it's hardly reaching the light strand. Whereas in a tight house, you can see how much better that throw of air is. And again, that's going to keep that air up there longer attached to that ceiling. Use more of that heat that's up there at the ceiling. Dry it out more before that jet detaches and falls to the floor. You can also find leakage a lot of times without even any tools. I mean, dust trails here above these tunnel shutters on this tripod, like, that's going to indicate areas of leakage. This is a homemade door that doesn't seal very well and uh, air is, you know, streaming in and leaving these dust trails. And you can just see that when you walk in the house. So increasing house tightness can often be quite simple. It doesn't always take tens and tens of thousands of dollars in renovations or anything just to do that. It's often as simple as just some plastic sheeting applied correctly in the right areas. 
light those leaky tunnel uh, fan shutters. Here is a thermal pick of some leaky tunnel fan shutters that we're going to apply plastic to. And this is before the plastic and then after the plastic. And you can just see from the thermal picture how much tighter this is, how much less of that cold air is seeping in. And we also have heater run times for this in the back of the house. So we're burning almost, you know, about $30 a day to heat the back end of this house uh, due to all that leakage. And then after we applied the plastic, that runtime dropped dramatically. Well, what about our example, right? We had two modern 50 uh, by 500 foot houses. If, what if you increased your house from pulling a 0.05 to a 0.25? And so for a cold weather flock, uh, that's this, you know, red to blue is going to be the difference in theoretical difference in heating across the course. And that's this includes ventilation and heat loss. So overall, you're going to have a 28 percent decrease in fuel usage for this flock at two dollars a gallon. We estimate that's almost fourteen hundred dollars in savings just due to increasing tightness on this one flock of birds. So just kind of to quickly wrap up, tighter houses mean less air leakage, and it means more air comes in where we want it to come in through our inlets. These houses are going to be more energy efficient, and it's correlated with a better bird environment. You know, remember that leaky curtain on the sidewall, if it's spilling cold air in right there that's not been dried, not only is it probably going to push birds away from the sidewall because it's colder, um, and it's not going to dry out that litter correctly. But then also, if you've got a center row of uh, radiant tube heaters that are really running hard to try to keep that overall area warm, it can even sometimes overheat the center uh, to where it's too hot for birds to be comfortable there and push birds out of the center. So now you get them off the sidewall, off of the center. You're really reducing the air comfortable area for your birds. Whereas this picture, this is a great picture. This, you know, we see birds wall to wall, not big, massive groups because they're chilled. So they're not huddling. This is a really good bird environment.